Yeah, yeah, hello to you too, Woody. I know I'm very late to the party on this one, and now everyone's been going on about your potential to spawn armies of tree guardians to do your bidding thanks to a new skill of yours, allowing for the construction of tree guard idols there, but I'm more concerned about just how viable it is. The craft is surprisingly cheap as things stand now, so I'll give it that, but given the fact that a single idol can only spawn two tree guardians no matter what, it is still a price to pay for not a whole heck of a lot in return, especially after Clay nerfed our ability to continue continuously use the same idol to spawn additional wooden allies. So if you want 10 guardians to use and abuse, you will need 5 idols at minimum, and yes, size does matter. The fuller the evergreen, the stronger the tree guardian, and trust me, you're gonna want the big boys at the end of the day. But how do we stop them from aggroing onto us every single time we spawn them, you ask? It's simple, a bush hat. That, or just spam spawn them and then disconnect from the game to reset it all. It's your choice, but with all that that out of the way, let's kill some big bads. If we can get our friends to actually aggro onto them, that is. For you see, tree guardians are not horde-like and only focus on things that hit them directly and or fell a nearby tree. So with that in mind, our options are actually pretty limited with the two classics, Deerclops and Perger, obviously being guaranteed marks. As Bee Queen can't fell anything and her grumbles can't hit a guardian for Pete's sake, the shadow pieces cannot interact with Flora either, so they're out of the question. Dragonfly is also a flyer, and even her ground pound refuses to aggro guardians for the most part. Antlion can actually knock trees over, however her spikes don't actually count as her doing it, so that leads to nothing. And of course, the ocean bosses are on the flippin' ocean. So yeah, it's as I said folks, not many options compared to our many other boss on boss videos on this channel, but still, Claws is plausible as the evil Santa can indeed knock down a tree or two in all of his phases, leading to an absolute beat down shore, but it is pretty much guaranteed that a deer is gonna die in the chaos, and that means enraged claws. Plus, the fire and ice attack really do counter our slow wood-based army, believe it or not. But to make matters even worse, once Claws does reach phase two, all of our tree guardians lose aggro, so if we don't have any other trees nearby, we're kinda screwed. Rude. So in the end, I will call this one plausible, but not fun, or very likely. Enrage Claws is just way too much, and we ourselves would need to make way too many Guardians to make it even halfway worth it. And as we continue here, that's unfortunately going to be a common theme. Now the good news about the Twins is that they are so damn aggressive with their aggro that they will target Guardians even in their sleep, so we don't even have to worry about their inability to fell trees because they're flyers. But but the bad news about the twins is that they're the flippin' twins, so they just slaughter literally everything with ease. They are just way too quick and deal 250 damage a charge, which is simply far too overwhelming for most any boss in this game mind, let alone a rather flimsy quote-unquote mini band of mini bosses of separated tree guardians. And so the last surface boss that's even remotely available to us then is the Celestial Champion, and this one, this one might surprise you. Phase 1 will be a joke and will honestly just cower in its high defense ability, leading to a long phase, sure, but a laughable one. Phase 2 can get a bit scary as that whirlwind spin attack is devastating to many mobs at once, so you should absolutely expect your army to take the bulk of its damage right here, but it will still be able to manage the whole thing as a lot of the other attacks of Phase 2 do next to or literally nothing, which is very helpful. And lastly, Phase 3 is kind of a tricky one to get started as while it can knock down trees, its lasers and crystals don't actually count as doing so, so our guardians themselves must be attacked in order to attack back. Unfortunately, Phase 3's lasers on top of Phase 2's spinning ability is likely going to see a lot of your minions dying left and right, but funny enough, that's actually a good thing. Because if left to fight mano e mano or close enough to it, Phase 3 doesn't move around all that much, meaning it doesn't use its lasers, so it's only meleeing, dropping crystals, and then using its Gestalt ability, which all three do next to or literally nothing to our friends. Now the fight's going to take forever now, sure, but it's honestly a for sure victory, so we'll take it. 
Have fun. But come on now, folks. We ain't done yet. Not when most of our cave dwelling bosses are actually our prime targets here today. After starting the Nightmare Were Pig bout, it is super easy to just have him fell a tree or hit the pack as a whole, and then the rest is history. He will stand no chance whatsoever, but do be aware that he will likely try to keep targeting you, so do be sure to keep your living wood wall in front of you at all times. The Ancient Guardian is essentially the exact same concept, and it's even faster to die, as they don't run around like a crazy pig all the time, so expect a swift slaughter for sure. And then we get the Toadstool, both normal and Misery Mind, which happens to be the boss that has been on every single person's mind since these idols released. And I'll admit, I do see why it's enticing, but I also now see why this is the fight that simply proves how gimmicky these tree guardians actually are. I upped my reasonable 10 guardians to 15 for this fight, and spoiler alert, I still lost with this thing having over 20,000 health left. I did get involved in clearing the trees and could have maybe done a better job there, sure, but Misery can deal a potential 300 damage of Boom Shroom, and that just adds up way too quickly. It's very doable. In fact, it's 100% doable, but you will need way, way too many idols and tree guardians to do it, and that's what leads me to warn you all just to not do this. Like, at all. If normal and or misery torch store are giving you trouble, which to be fair, they give us all trouble, and you still want to use a very gimmicky yet still super viable option, just do this lure plant method right here. Yes, it still works. And overall, folks, we just got far better boss killing methods for pretty much every single big bad out there. And that's the first thing that we need to get across. Secondly, these idols should really just be used to farm living logs nowadays with ease, because I'm pretty sure that's the bloody point. Yeah, no. Let me get my point across very, very clearly. I probably shouldn't have even made this video, as I do not want to endorse this at all. It is just a one-time, fun little spin-off, I suppose. But thanks for watching, folks. So well wishes to all. Remember now, size does matter. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.